Sam Lane. Good evening, friends. Thanks for joining us here at the National Storm Channel. I trust you had a beautiful day across Oklahoma, and we had a beautiful sunset, that's for sure. Looking at uh, this picture sent in to us uh, from Hera, Oklahoma, just a beautiful evening out there as the sun starts to set after a beautiful day. Just a few thin cirrus clouds are moving across the area right now. Uh, not too much as far as that goes. Now let's take a look at the uh, Grand Lake area. Another beautiful sunset this evening up there along the Grand River and also Lake of the Cherokees. Just a gorgeous night. Look at the water. Very, very calm this evening. So a gorgeous, gorgeous day. However, there was one caveat and that was some brush fires that were going on uh, down in central Oklahoma and a few places across the area. Let's put this in motion. And you can see here, uh, this was at Northwest 192nd in Portland on the northwestern side of Oklahoma City. You see the cows running away from the pretty big grass fire that was going on out there in that area this afternoon. So with the dry conditions and the bright sunshine and the uh, temperatures in the 70s and even close to 80 in some parts of Oklahoma, and I'll show you that in a moment, it just kind of added the all those ingredients kind of came together for these grass fires to get a little bit out of control. So be careful with your fire if you're going to be outside over the next day or so. However, we do have rain in the forecast, and so it looks like things are going to be changing as far as that goes and the forecast. All right, let's look at the radar. Pretty much all clear this evening, not a thing to show, just some southeasterly winds starting to bring up the moisture from the south and east across our area, and that's going to be the case over the next day or so. Lows this morning were quite chilly, uh, quite varied as well. Check out Poto, or excuse me, uh, Pryor. They were 32 this morning, but not that far away in Talala, they were 40. So it just really depended upon where you were this morning as to how cold it got. 43 here in Tulsa with the heat island effect. But notice over in Cherokee County, Tahlequah dropped down to 31 this morning, as well as Worcester down in LaFleur County. Meanwhile, over in McAllister, they were 34. But over there in Stewart, not that far away, they were 44. So just gives you an idea of just how much of a difference there can be when you have these clear, calm mornings and that allows the cold air to really drain into the lower valleys, like over in Wilberton, where they dropped down to freezing, but other places were in the 40s. So it was a pretty varied morning across our area. Let's take a look at temperatures this afternoon. They were very nice across the area. You can't really beat this for mid-November. We made it up to 71 at the Tulsa Mesonet site, but not that far away. They stayed in the upper 60s, but still very pleasant day. 68 in Talala, as well as Nowata. 69 for our friends up in Vanita, or 68, I should say. 66 in Miami for one of the coolest readings. But check out down to South. 81 down in Warica, down in Jefferson County. 80 in Southern Tillman County. So a very warm day across the Red River. Even 77 in Durant, Hugo, 78 in Antlers and 77 in Natoka, so a gorgeous, gorgeous day with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s down that way. Now, temperatures have fallen off right now into the 50s in a few locations, like over in Mays County with prior checking in with 55, 57 for our friends in Bonita as well as Nowata, and up towards the west, we're seeing readings in the 60s, still 70 in some places like Alva with 70, 72 in Buffalo right now, also 70s along the Red River too, 71 in Altus right now, 71 down in Tillman County and Grainfield, and 60s down in southern Oklahoma, places like you follow with 65 and McAllister with 62, but it's also down to 54 in Worcester. So again, another one of those nights where the cold air will really start to drain into the, some, some of those lower valleys, so be aware of that. Dew points are starting to increase across the area with dew points in the 30s to around 40 degrees. So the moisture is starting to increase. That's going to help out with the wildfires tomorrow as deeper moisture is going to be moving up from the south. So we should have less of a threat tomorrow, but still just be careful with any outside flame tomorrow. And then dew points are in the 20s in some locations like Westwood with 28 and Miami with 28 as well. Check out the panhandle. They have dew points in the teens. So that's where the dry air really is holding on out there. But all this moisture is going to be surging northward over the next day or two, and as it does, that's when we're going to see it run into a cold front and generate some rainfall. But no cold fronts tonight and no rain tonight, just mostly fair skies with just a few cirrus clouds moving in from the north and west, you see on the satellite view, and also some clouds across Texas uh, scattered around there. And it's all part of a storm system that's getting a little bit better organized out towards our west, and that's going to move in our direction over the next day or so. So get ready for the rainfall as uh, it could be quite intense in some locations. But again, 
not tonight. Lows pretty much in the 50s across the area. 53 in Tulsa, 50 in Omogi, 50 over in Poto. However, they could drop down into the 40s uh, there in Poto as well. Tallahassee, 49, 45 in Fayetteville, and 46 in Cassville for some of the coolest readings. Meanwhile, upper 50s down in southwestern parts of the state like Duncan with 57, Ardmore with 57, and 53 over there in Durant. Then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to see highs in the 60s across the area. We're going to see a little bit more in the way of cloud cover tomorrow. So we're going to see temperatures in the mid-60s, a larger real estate tomorrow, 64 in Tulsa, 63 in Muskogee, 63 in Grove, as well as Vanita. Cooler off in southwestern Missouri, where there'll be 61 in Cassville, as well as Fayetteville. But down in Idabel, they could touch 70. And I do think they'll touch 70 there in Duncan, even with the increased cloud cover, and 68 over there in Chickasha. Then tomorrow morning, not tomorrow morning, but Thursday morning, we are going to have some changes. There's going to be a front dropping in from the north and west. By 7 a.m., it'll be stretching from just west of Bartlesville, west of Tulsa and Bristow, down through Shawnee, and then down through Duncan. Notice the temperatures dropping off pretty rapidly behind that front with 60s ahead of it, 63 in Duncan, 61 in Chickasha, but notice 51 in Kingfisher and 47 in Enid, and it only gets colder from there. So once this front clears the area, we'll see temperatures dropping during the day on Thursday. So these temperatures will only be valid around 7 a.m. on Thursday. Then as the front comes through, temperatures will be dropping into the 50s and then the 40s, and we'll get to that in the forecast here in just a second. In fact, here's a look at the rainfall forecast uh, over the next few days. This is the GM model, or the Canadian model, and it's basically forecasting a large swath of one inch plus rain across most of Oklahoma, uh, and with a heavier slice from, oh, let's say around Muskogee eastward over into western Arkansas. That's the GM model. Then if we look at the, Canadian, the um, German model, or the ICOM model, it says, no, most of the heaviest rain is going to be from basically Stillwater to Bartlesville and points southward, even heavier amounts in west central Arkansas and southeast Oklahoma, and around three quarters of an inch here in Tulsa. So that's the ICOM model. And if we look at the uh, GFS model, it also kind of has a similar picture with the heaviest rain along and south of I-40 with lighter amounts along I-44 and maybe another swath of heavier rain off towards the north and west. And if we look at the uh, NAM three kilometer model, nope, it kind of goes along with the Canadian and says so there's going to be a large area of one inch plus with some embedded swaths of heavier rain uh, stretching from northern Rogers County up into southwest Missouri and maybe around Oklahoma City and down north of Ardmore near Murray County. But uh, that's the NAM three kilometer. And if we look at the 12 kilometer, it kind of has it a little bit more towards the north and west. So the general idea is, is that a large area of real estate is going to get rainfall, generally ranging from around half to an inch of rain common across the area with some embedded areas of one inch plus. So if you just happen to be in one of those heavier rain bands, you could see quite a bit of rain in a short period of time. Not expecting a lot of flash flooding with this because it's not expected to really rain hard in a very short period of time. It's going to be stretched out more over a longer period, so the rain will have time to kind of soak into the soils. Here's the Worth model, and again, it also has a pretty heavy stripe from northwestern Arkansas right through the Tulsa area, southern Tulsa, down towards Ardmore, just north of Ardmore. So we still have yet to look at the model data to exactly nail down where the heaviest rain is going to be, but there's a pretty good bet everyone is going to get soaked. All right, over the next seven days, Winds deep, 64, another nice day. Increasing clouds, though. Rain will begin late Wednesday into early Thursday morning. In fact, an 80% chance of rain in the area on Thursday morning. That drops to around 60% Thursday afternoon, but then the rain comes back Thursday night into Friday, and especially on Friday, 40% chance of rain in the morning and 80% by afternoon. And notice the temperatures, 64 on your high for Wednesday. That will continue into about Thursday morning. Again, 62 in the morning, and then temperatures dropping through the day to around 46 by evening. Then it starts out at 46 by midnight on Friday, but then temperatures still dropping into the 30s by Friday night. So we're gonna have to watch for the possibility of a mixture, especially up towards the north. But right now, we're gonna go with just all rain right now, but that could change. Then on Saturday and Sunday, mostly sunny with highs in the 50s and lows in the 30s, that continues into your Monday. Then another good soaking rain on Tuesday, 
I'm going 100% chance of rain on Tuesday with a high of 58 and a low of 39, which is actually pretty close to normal. By the time we reach the 26th of November, normal high is 56 and the normal low of 35. Then if we look at the extended forecast, well, this is the Thanksgiving forecast, which is kind of extended. You can see that the European model is forecasting a surface low over southwestern parts of Iowa with a front draping off towards the north and west. This is around mealtime on Thanksgiving Day. Notice there's not really a lot of precipitation associated with this. The moisture is not there and it's kind of lacking with this particular system right now. That's the way we're thinking. High pressure in the southeastern United States. Very windy for the Great Lakes though with this powerful storm system that's going to hit us on, third, on Tuesday. Then by Thursday, Thanksgiving, it will be sweeping up through the New England and the Maritimes of Canada, creating lots of problems on travel problems for them the day before on Wednesday. But here it looks pretty good. Then on the GFS forecast, which is the same time period, same day, you can see the GFS is a little bit slower. It has the front still to the west of Oklahoma, developing in the Plain States around mealtime on Thanksgiving. So most of the country looks like it's going to be pretty good weather, except for the northern Dakotas. But, you know, that's typical for this time of year for them. All right, let's take a look at your extended outlook. And this goes from the period of the 27th through the 3rd of December. So we start out with 48 on Wednesday with partly cloudy skies. Then on Thanksgiving, looks like a pretty nice day here in Tulsa with a high of 56 and a low of 43. Then on Friday, we bring in the rain again on Friday night, 40% uh, chance, mainly in the eastern sections, with a high of 51 and a low of 41. Then on Saturday, that could change over to some light snow in northwestern Arkansas. Only about a 20% chance, but I did want to throw that in there. A low of 42 in Tulsa, 53 on Saturday afternoon, then on Sunday. And by the way, that's the uh, Bedlam game. Looks like it's going to be great weather. A little bit cool, but not too bad. No precipitation expected. And then on Sunday, 47 and 37. Monday, 49 and 36. And then on Tuesday, partly cloudy with 48 and 40, which is still below the normal of 53 and 32. And by the way, December the 3rd is when we drop down to the average of 32 degrees. So from this point on, the average low in Tulsa is freezing or less. So winter really starts in earnest at that point in time. If you're heading out to the lakes, this is the way they're looking. Not too bad. They are starting to fall uh, back to closer to normal levels. Ulaga is at 0.7 and falling. Grand's at 0.4 and falling. Hudson's falling. Fort Gibson's falling. Tinkler, you kind of get the idea. All the lakes are falling right now. Keystone's steady though, as well as Skytook and also Lake Thunderbird, but it's looking pretty good right now at only 0.2 below normal. And if you are hunting, this is a new graphic that I'm starting to show uh, to show the hunting forecast. This graph right here is the graph of temperature. Typically deer do not like to move around too much when the temperature is above 60 degrees. So you can see that the forecast is basically right along that 60 degree line until we get to Thursday. And then temperatures drop below that 60 degree mark on Thursday. So as far as temperatures go, that's when the best time to go deer hunting would be, would be on Thursday. Also notice the winds. They like winds generally around 5 to 15 miles per hour, and that's what we're expected to have. So the winds are going to be favorable for deer hunting. Then on the barometric pressure, which after doing some research, I discovered that deer have a tendency uh, to like barometric pressure of 1,015 millibars or higher, or if you're reading an aneroid barometer, 30 inches even or higher. And that's going to be below 1,015 again until Thursday morning when the barometric pressure rises above that threshold of 1,015 millibars. So again, it looks like Thursday morning is going to be the better day to go hunting. And then here's the precipitation accumulation forecast. And again, there will be precip around, but if you happen to be out and around on Thursday morning. So I think Thursday morning is going to be the best time around sunset, or not sunset, but sunrise on Thursday morning to go out deer hunting. So if you're interested in that, there's your forecast for that. Now, if you're looking at temperatures over the next eight to 14 days, from the 27th through the December the 3rd, notice this big cool area across the western United States and warmer than normal along the eastern seaboard. So the trough is gonna be switching just a little bit. And most of the countries are gonna be experiencing wet weather, except for us, all the way down into Texas. And I think we'll take it after the rounds of rain that we're gonna have over the next couple of storm systems, we could use some drying out. Again, that's from the period of the 27th through December the 3rd. That's a look at your forecast. I'll be back tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock with another update for you at that time. Thanks again for joining us here at the National Storm Channel. We should appreciate your support and have a great evening. Oklahoma weather.
We know it can change in an instant. Get your weather from a real Oklahoma weather authority. Sam Lane is a third generation Oklahoman. Like and share us on Facebook and on Twitter. All weather, all Oklahoma. Sam Lane is Oklahoma's weather authority.